The past few weeks have been tumultuous ones for investors all over the world. With a serious scare of a world war, investors have been on a wild goose chase on how best to secure their finances. Before that, we had a pandemic that revealed just how much rot lies in the traditional banking system. For example, in the United States, many banks are heavily leveraged and solely dependent on the feds to keep their doors open. It is only a matter of time before the funds run dry and the aid brutally stops. Then what happens to account holders, people that are solely dependent on banks? One can only guess. A similar situation is occurring in many other countries around the world. Let's face it, the global economy is on the brink of ruin, and only people who are proactive can avoid the inevitable collapse. Financial education is the first step towards avoiding ruin, whether from invasion or the collapse of a local currency. Many people are grossly uninformed about managing their finances. People have to learn about money, existing financial systems, and how to make the best of the chaotic situation. Some of the common misconceptions revolve around the immortality of traditional financial institutions, especially banks. People look at the impressive and gigantic buildings of banks and believe they are immortal, untouchable, and have endless supplies of money. Many believe that their wealth will remain secure as long as they store it in the banks. Are the banks really immortal? Should you absolutely trust them with your money? We examine these important questions in this video. Ensure you like the video and drop your comments below. Enjoy. Let's examine the issue from all sides. After depositing your money in the bank, it automatically becomes the bank's assets by law. The only thing you control is the digital figure reflected in the record. The numbers are exiting a database. You can make transfers, withdrawals, or do anything with your money. But as long as it remains with the bank, it belongs to the bank. When you make a transfer, it is just a digital chain of command. So what happens when there is a crisis and the people in charge are handicapped from carrying out their duties? There will be no digital command, hence no money. It is almost unbelievable that a person can work all their life, save their entire wealth in a bank, and be denied access because of a crisis or geopolitical tension. You might argue that traditional financial institutions have been around for a long time and have served people well over time. However, they are riddled with too many shortcomings that put everyday people at a disadvantage. For one, they are quite susceptible to sanctions and government decrees. Plus, does your money really grow in a bank? We think not. Russians, Ukrainians, Venezuelans, Turks, and Argentines realized this simple fact when it was too late to make amends. It is important to know that when you decide to keep your money at the bank, it is at the mercy of that financial institution. It can bail out at any given time, leaving you helpless, stranded, and without means. Apart from the affected country, all other countries with connected financial institutions will share part of the repercussions. It is quite understandable that money at the bank is very convenient to satisfy short-term expenses. But then, the risk exists. This risk supersedes the short-term service the bank provides. So, how do you avoid getting your money grossly devalued, seized, frozen, or becoming inaccessible overnight? A short answer, cryptocurrencies and other digital assets built on the blockchain. Have you not wondered why the demand for Bitcoin goes up every year, even with its fixed value? This is because a lot of people get better at understanding and seeing its importance. Even the central banks have come to embrace the importance of Bitcoin. Russians are turning to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies because of the attacks on their financial institutions. Investors, creators, musicians, rap artists, and athletes make thousands of dollars from trading non-fungible tokens. Apart from all the juicy offers present with decentralized digital assets and platforms, you can also be sure that you and only you control your fate and wealth. When you buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you and not a bank subject to the government's whims control your fate. You take charge of your situation without depending on other people during times of turmoil and chaos. Even if politicians decide to do the unexpected, your assets will be free from whatever happens. Your assets will be safe and not devastated by the result of financial sanctions. It is very important to start enlightening yourself in terms of financial education. The world has evolved and is moving faster than ever. You need to start moving at the pace of the world. One more thing before we end the video. Your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies stay completely safe and free from sanctions only when they are stored in private crypto wallets. These allow you to store your private keys, keeping your crypto safe and accessible. They also allow you to send, receive, and spend cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Private wallets are available on devices like mobile, web, and hardware. Since the users have the right to their own private key, the personal wallet is relatively safer than the exchange wallet, which is only as secure as the exchange's security protocol. There are many trusted private wallets you can choose from. They include Ledger Nano X, Ledger Nano S, Trezor, Atomic Wallet, Exodus, Trust Wallet. Some of the wallets support hundreds of cryptocurrencies and tokens. They also come in varieties. Ledger Nano X, for instance, has three versions. You can go for the mobile wallet, the hardware, 
or the desktop version. Read up on the features of various private wallets to find what works best for you. We promise you will not be disappointed. It's time to explore a decentralized and independent asset, which is exactly what you can get with digital assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum. What are the shortcomings of traditional banking systems that investors can avoid with digital assets? Please drop your comments below and remember to click the like button.